One of the most versatile elements in Genshin Impact is Animo. I mean, look at its star-studded roster. Sucros, Venti, and Kazuha are good for grouping and swirling. Jean, Zhao, Hazo, and Wander are good DPSs. Farzan is a good buffer for other Animo characters. And Lynette does... something, I don't know. And Sayu is the best one, I don't care what others think. She can deal good damage, she can produce consistent swirls, she can heal herself, she's fast, and she's adorable. With all these skills, you can probably solo Genshin Impact with only Sayu, which is exactly what I'm about to do. Here are the rules. I can only use Sayu in battle. Any puzzles that require another element can be completed with another character. No fighting in co-op, and all claymores are allowed. Now let's see if you can beat Genshin Impact using only Sayu. I don't have the footage of me getting Sayu, but when I did pull, I got both Sayu and the Bell. First we need to do the three domains, and the first one we do is Amber's domain. The enemies in there were pretty simple, and we were able to trigger the Pyro Monument with Sayu's elemental skill. For Kaya's domain, we beat the simple enemies and jump over the water. Lastly was Lisa's domain, and we were able to perform a skip to skip the entire domain. With Act 1 done, we need to get to AR-10 to start Act 2. This seems about a good time to go over Sayu's pros and cons. Pros. Her elemental skill can pick up different elements and add on some swirl damage for every time it hits. Her elemental skill is also really good for traversal because her elemental skill makes her the third fastest character in the game behind Yelon and Wander, which is great for us because we're short, um, not tall yet, which has the lowest speed of all character types. It also generates quite a lot of particles for our burst, which heals us. Speaking of our burst, it not only heals us, but it can also damage enemies once we've been healed enough. Alright, that's all the pros, now the cons. Our normal attack multipliers are not that high, so we're going to have to rely on an elemental skill and burst to get most of our damage. Sayu is also an Inazuma character, which means that she takes materials from Inazuma that we can't get until we unlock it, so we'll be stuck at level 20 until AR 30. For this AR grind, we do the usual Mondstadt exploration and adventure handbook quests. That shoots us straight to AR 10, but I didn't stop there, and I decided I wanted to get to AR 18 early. I got every animoncula I could get in Mondstadt besides the ones in Storm Terra's Lair, opened a lot of chests, did commissions, opened Shrines of Depths, and even went to Leewood to do some quests and some chest hunting. By the way, there's a lot of pulls that I'm not mentioning because all that we got in them were either characters or weapons that we couldn't use. I went up to the Jade Chamber 2 Electric Boogaloo and did a pull up there. I'm not surprised! Well, now this account has my two favorite characters, so I guess that counts for something. I resist the urge to use the Dream Team and continue on with Sayu only. Next I decided to do some story quests, and the ones I did were Kai's story quest, Lisa's story quest, and Jangling's story quest. Finally, we start Act 2 of Mondstadt. We meet Venti unscripted 2AM Kokomi here. For previous videos that had some form of Venti slander, or however people put it, those were just jokes for the videos, and in reality, I really like Venti. If I didn't, I wouldn't have spent money on him to try and get him in Nomura. And then go to fight the Eye of the Storm at Windrise, and it was pretty easily destroyed. We steal the Holy Liar and then meet my other river character in Genshin. Next was the Fatui hideout, and as you can tell, I took this very seriously. Jokes aside, it was easy. Next, we need to get three tiered up crystals, and first one we get is by a Ruin Guard. Because Sayu deals a lot of elemental damage fast, we were able to destroy it. Next one we get is in a domain. For the Pyro Abyss Mage, we didn't even need to lead it to the water because we could just swirl Hydra with our elemental skill. We open a random chest for the last crystal, and now it's time to call the Valen. That's the end of Act 2. Since we're already AR-18, we can start Monster Act 3 immediately. For the Hydro Abyss Mage at the front of Storm Terror's Lair, we were able to swirl Cryo to freeze him in place until we defeated him. Inside Storm Terror's Lair, we got our first death of the playthrough from a Hilly Troll Archer, which is kind of embarrassing. And we get the rest of the Animoculi we need, giving us a level 10 statue. We need to trigger three Light Actuators, and the only one that had combat was easy. Against Devalin, we're apparently not good enough to see the numbers that we're doing. But we're easy able to take him down in two phases. That's the end of Monster Act 3, and here's our reward for completing that. Are you kidding me? Oh. Twice? What?
The fuck? I do like Chi Chi, but she's not even one of my favorite characters, like Diluc was. Now we need to get to Air 23 to start Leo Act 1. I returned to Leeway to do a bit more exploration and then start Spiral Abyss. We couldn't even get 9 stars on floor 1, so we leave and do a wish with the Primo Gems we got. WHY?! This was the first and only character specific 5 star weapon that I had for a long time, and now I have 2 of them. And yes, I got all 3 of those 5 stars in one day. Later we do Diluc story quest and Razor story quest. After completing Razor story quest, I fought the Wolf of the North, which was awful because we can only damage it with our physical attacks because he's immune to Animo. It took two attempts, but it very well could have taken more. That gets us to AR-23, but I decided to spend a lot of my resin on a Cecilia Garden Domain to get some extra experience and weapon materials for the bell. Now we can start Act 1 of Liu. Rex Lapis dies, and now we have to inform the Adepti about his death. First was Moon Carver, and his buff made it so my burst had unlimited uptime. Next is Cloud Retainer, and we make some food for her before skipping her domain by jumping off a tree. Next is Zhao, and the Ruin Hunter in this part of this quest wasn't too bad, and lastly is Mountain Shaper. We found this guy's brother in the Amber after multiple attempts, and that marks the end of Liu Act 1. We reach Air 25 while doing Act 1, and that means we can automatically start Act 2 after doing the Ascension Domain. Because there were only hilly trolls in there, it was no problem. Enemies are almost double our level and we're still destroying them. We meet Zhongli and then go to boil some rocks. We are actually able to heat up the pot because Sai can swirl Pyro, or as I call her in this form, Pyro. After that we did some wishes. What? what the what the what the what this is the fourth five star Why Oh hey look that's actually not that bad. Funny to think the four star weapon is better than the five star weapon for this playthrough. At least we find out of a replacement for the bell. Later we go inside the NPC who might become a playable character now that this NPC is becoming a playable character's teapot and take on multiple slimes. None of them were a challenge. Next we go to the Guizhong Ballista to fight some treasure hoarders. It wasn't hard, just took a bit longer than some of the other fights. Probably because I found how many treasure hoarders were there. Zhongli invites us to dinner and knowing Sayu she probably ate the entire menu. That's the end of Act 2. A 4 star. I, that's... Wow! To get to AR-28, I have a foolproof strategy. Do an ungodly amount of Trial Grounds of Thunder, then some story quests, and cap it off with Dragonspine exploration. Dragonspine is perfect for getting AR because of how much there is to do there. After a few hours, we reach AR-28 and we can start Leeway Act 3. We were able to trigger the animal mechanism in the mountains without having to switch the character for once, and then we go to the Guizhong Ballista to take on the Millilith. They were pretty easily taken out. We meet Ningguang at the Jade Chamber and then go to sing to some flowers for Zhongli and we run into probably the most annoying fight in the entire playthrough. It was raining when I fought these three cryowopper flowers and because of this I couldn't do anything and they just permafreezed me. It took seven painful attempts and I couldn't teleport away from them. If I felt like I was losing, I just had to die. After that we can go fight the Ginger. He was generally destroyed and even when we got hit we could easily heal it away. Afterwards, we have to fight Osile, and Sayu being Sayu, she destroyed this. She just beat a Fatui Harbinger and a god, and she says she can't even squish Noni Kabuto. That's the end of Liwa Act 3. Now we need to complete both Dane's Live quests and get to AR 30 to start Inazuma. Sayu might be one of the best characters for this because her elemental skill infusion gives her a lot of sweat potential. Using this, we were able to trivialize most of Bogkeeper Dainsleaf and make most of the fights, and we will be reunited pretty easy, even the ones with the Ruin Hunter. In the last fight of We Will Be Reunited, I had to take down the two Abyss Mages to have a fighting chance, but it was generally not too bad. We weren't quite AR-30 yet, so we started the Jade Chamber quest. And let me just say, I FUCKING HATE THE GEOVISION! Now we're AR-30 and we can start the Inazuma Prologue quest. The two fights in this quest are Slimes and Treasure Hoarders, and they were easy. With that done, we can finally go to Inazuma. The only thing standing between me and Crystal Marrow is the transport mission. Because we had the ocean to swirl Hydra with, everybody got taken down pretty fast because of Swirl's wide radius. Now we're allowed to go anywhere in Inazuma, and we quickly race to Kanazuka and Yashiori Island to get some Crystal Marrow. 
After all this time, we can finally ascend ourselves. But we do also have to fight the Magu Kenki. It can deal a lot of damage to us, but it's nowhere near as bad as the Electro Registrar was in Dory only. At Ascension Phase 2, we get to hear Sayu say, Awesome! And before long, we're at level 60. Later in the Archon Quest, we break somebody out of jail. It's really nice just to be able to grab an element and be able to deal that element's damage easily for the fight. It's pretty much like we have two elements when we're able to do that. That's the end of Act 1, and now we have to do Ayaka's and Yoimiya story quest. And there's nothing really worth going over in these quests, so let's get back to the Archon Quest. Act 2 starts with us fighting the Raiden Shogun. <laughs> and Sayu said she would never get to meet her. Honestly, she was destroyed. With our first passive talent, we don't even need our burst to heal ourselves. Next, we need to save the Virgin from the Tamari Commission soldiers and then go to the Resistance Camp. There, we need to do the archery demonstration, which is not happening with only Sayu, so Kale did it for us. At the front lines, we take on some apparently powerful enemies. Sai would beg to differ. That's the end of Act 2, and now it's time for Act 3. We start by clearing some Ronin around Watatsumi Island, and once again, Swold made this easy. At the Electro Monument, Sayu could probably do this if you find a way to inflict her with Electro and you clear the rain by doing Orobashi's legacy, but I don't have the patience for that, so Lisa's here to do it for us. The Electro Long Stroll that appears afterwards was pretty easy, and now the Delusion Factory. Sayu did really well with previous elemental shields, and the Fatui are no exception. Sayu rolled through this domain with no problems. The anti red and Shogun training was pretty easy, but for the rest of Inazuma and all the chasm, the footage got corrupted. So I'll just cover the important parts and recreate them in Photoshop. We finally get to meet the one. The only. WHAT?! THIS IS A MOMENT IN HISTORY! TAKE A PICTURE! A little while later, we have to fight Senora. I'm not sure you realize quite how much distance there is between us, both in status and in strength. What the f did you just f***ing say about me, you little b***h? Think again, f <laughs> We pretty much destroyed her. There's not much to talk about here. Pretty much the same goes for Raiden Shogun as well. That's the end of Inazuma, and now we need to do the Chasm Dainsleaf quest. This one was similar to the other Dainsleaf quest, just some easy abyss enemies. Before starting Sumira, we do some artifact grinding and finally get a 4-star Animo Dynamics bonus goblet. Now it's time for Sumeru. First fight is inside of the Withering Zone, and all the enemies were fungi, which were easy. Now! Destroy the tumor of the withering. Later on in the dream domain, there's similarly easy enemies. We go to Samara City to get our Akasha terminal and then go to Port Ormos. At Port Ormos, we meet all hate them and buy some of the goods from Dory. We fight some fungi who were all taken out incredibly easily, and at the dock we fight some Aramites. This fight was no trouble, and that marks the end of Act 1. Act 2 is just a bunch of cutscenes, so let's just skip to Act 3. We meet the Doctor and fight some Aramites in the forest with no problems. Later on in the desert, we fight some Rift Towns. We were able to use their element against them because for some reason the Electro Rift Towns are weak to Electro. That's the end of Act 3. Act 4 starts with some more Aramites and they were the easiest of the bunch. At the Ellersar Hospital, there were some Hilly Trolls and a Lava Troll, which were not too bad. The natural position which is the positional propensity of an entity in natural motion in contrast with an object in forced motion? Huh? Oh, Scroll wasn't your God. fucking strong suit, was it? <laughs> we don't actually need a Dendro character to trigger the Dendro pillars because we can grab a Dendro granum and dash over to the pillars. Because Sai's fast as fuck, we were able to get all of them pretty easily. Last was the King Dash Rat domain. Most solo playthroughs usually struggle in this room, but Sayu did it surprisingly easily. Now it's time for Act 5. We fight more Aramites, and despite how we had helpers, they literally didn't finish off a single one of them. That's understandable when you have such a strong character as Sayu on your side. At Party's DI, there were multiple Fatui members. This was harder than the Delusion Factory, but not too much harder. We once again just kind of rolled over them. After that, we meet the Bonafide God. We have to sift through a lot of plot, but after that, we can do the Deus Foundry. Enemies like the Electro Hammer Guy were annoying like they always are, but overall, not too bad. Now it's time for Scaramouche. Because the Balladier is dumb, he gave us elements we could swirl, so Phase 1 was a cakewalk. Phase 2 is just a lot of waiting for this thing to deal the damage for me because I couldn't knock him down. Once we take them down, we have to explore the polluted part of Ermansoul. The Rift Towns were a classic case of taking a lot of damage, but healing it all up, and on the boat were Hilly Trolls and Electro Lautro. We took them out pretty fast, and that marks the end of Sumeru Act 5. Now we need to get to AR-40 to start Fontaine and do carry Barrett. 
Cry Bear is not that long of a quest, so let's just get that out of the way. The only fight worth mentioning was the one with the Cryo Herald. Its shield was easily broken with our physical attacks. After that, we do Klee's, Jean's, and Venti's story quest. That gets us pretty close to AR-40, and fighting the Mangu Kenki a few more times to get our boss drops gets us to AR-40. We send Sayu one last time, and now it's time to start Fontaine. We meet Linny and Lynette at Maritime Harbor, then go to the Court of Fontaine. There we meet Child, who takes this fight for us, so we'll skip it. At Linny and Lynette's show, we meet Nivilet. During the show, somebody fucking dies, and now we need to investigate it. Long story short, we clear Linny and Lynette's names, and now Act 2. You would not be for most of this Arkham quest. Yes! And we're investigating another case. Doing that leads us into this domain with a bunch of Gardamax. None were really that hard. Not even the duo of the Missile Gardamax and Electro Gardamax. We convict this guy of dissolving people, but Child also gets lumped in with it. He gets sent to prison, which is what we'll be focusing on for the next two acts. Literally, there's no combat in these next two acts, so I'm just gonna skip to Act 5. Act 5 starts with the Tower Domain. Most fights in this domain weren't too bad, but the final run with the Animo Rogue, the Hydro Rogue, and the Ruin Guard was ridiculous. I had to slowly whittle down one of them to even have a chance of beating them all. I took down the Hydro Rogue, but got taken out by the Ruin Guard soon after. A fun four minutes later, we beat the Animo Rogue and Ruin Guard. A lot of Cord and Fiorina lore stuff happens. <laughs> Super Luigi Galaxy! Now we can fight the all devouring narwhal. The narwhal phase was really easy, and in the shadow phase, he couldn't even trigger the auto revive from Nivulet. With that, the narwhal's defeated, and that's the end of Fontaine Act 5. That means we beat Genshin Impact only using Sayu. Going into this challenge, I thought it would be a lot harder because Sayu was an Inazuma character and we couldn't get her ascension materials for a long time, but it was quite the opposite. I guess swirl and healing goes a long way. On the tier list of difficulty, I'm placing her in the middle of on the easy side, and on the solo tier list, I'm placing her at A. I expected her to do well after ascending, but she did well throughout the entire playthrough, even before ascending her. Must be because Sayu's amazing. I don't know what the next challenge will be, but the next video will be a Navia Poles video. Until then, I'll leave you with that.